Okay, um, this last question from the mock paper we did. Um, what we're going to be asked to do is do sampling distributions. If you remember, they're tables of values that um, say what outcome can come up and what the probability is that that outcome comes. So what we need to do is actually consider all possible ways the these coins can come out. So two coins are selected at random from a bag, and one coin selected from the jar. So we've got two in this ratio of two to three. The importance about the ratio is that we are assuming they're sufficient, that when we take one, it's not going to change the ratio. We're talking hundreds and thousands of uh, coins in each place, not just two, uh, five coins, two two ones and a three twos. We're not considering that. We are saying there must be a large amount of coins. Uh, Effectively to the point where if I take one 1p one coin, the ratio doesn't change. Um, so the t is the total of each. So t is the total of three coins. Two from jar, from two from bag. one from jar. And what we need is what possible scores can we get by doing this. So um, I know Mertas went through quite a, a, an interesting way of doing it where he analysed all the possibilities and probabilities. Probably the simplest way is to list the outcomes. So we've got two from the jar, so these can only be ones and two, so let's go for one, 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 two, Two one and two two. Then for each of those, we also have the option of getting a two, and then the same thing again for. So that's from the bag, and that's from the jar. And what we've got over here is a one 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 two two one. Two, two, and now we've got jar, and all of those are fives. They're all possibilities that can happen from this situation. So let's calculate the t's for each of them. So the total for that is four, total there is five, five, and six. So we've got a seven, an eight, an eight, and a nine. So that's the possibilities we've got. Um, what we need to consider is what's the probability of each case. <coughs> now, these numbers don't come up evenly. So to get the 4, the probability I've got is 4 came from a 1, 1. So that's 2 thirds, 2 thirds, and 1 quarter. So the probability of me getting the 4 is going to be 4 out of... 936. Oh, no. It's out of 5. That's out of 5. All, my numbers are all over the place. 5, 5. You know, so that's 125. So 4 out of 125. Same thing happens here. We've got 2 out of 5, 3 out of 5, um, and 1 out of 5. And there are two ways of doing that. So we're going to get uh, 6, 12 out of 125. To get a 6, we've got uh, 2, which is 3 fifths, 3 fifths, and a 1 fifth down the bottom here. So that's going to be 9 out of 125. And we do the same thing on the right side for all the probabilities with um, the jar. So what they're expecting to see is my T numbers, the probability calculation, and the final probability. So for, like we showed above, we've got 2 over 5 times 2 over 5 times 1 over 5, one way. 
How many ways could we do it? Five. We've got two out of five times three out of five times one out of five. There are only two ways, but these numbers swap around, so it's the same thing. So there's two ways of doing it. If we've got a way of getting a 5 over here, we may have to do a separate calculation for the probability and add it in. Uh, 6, we got 3 out of 5 times 3 out of 5 times 1 out of 5 times 1. Uh, 7, we've got uh, 2 out of 5 times 2 out of 5. That's the probability of the 1s. And then 5 is uh, going to be 4 out of 5 is a probability of 16, so let's go through and whack these in. 4, 1 25th. Uh, this one's 12, 125th. 9, 125th. 16, 125th. 8 is uh, these two ways, so there's two ways of doing it. Uh, we've got a 2, which is 2 out of 5 times the probability of a 1, uh, sorry, a 3 out of 5 times a 2 out of 5, um, times my probability of a 5, which is 4 out of 5. So that's 24, 48 out of 125. And the 9 is the 2s, which are all 3s. And my 2, which is a 4 out of 25. And that gives me 36 out of 125. Last thing to do is just quickly check. That should be all possibilities. Therefore, we do a quick check to say the total. Uh, 4, 16, 25, 51, uh, 99, 89, 16, 16, 25. 35, 41, 1989, 125. Yeah, so we've now done all possibilities. That's okay. Quick check. Um, part B, and that was it. That's what's needed. Part B is finding the, was it the median? Something distribution of median values for the three selected coins. So, what we need to do is say what are the median values we would have in each case. So I'm just going to go back, add to these, uh, or actually you can even do it under these. But the medians come from, uh, if I do blue, median here is 1, median here is 2, median here is 2 as well, those two swap over, median here 2. So uh, coming back over to this side, Median now on this one is going to be a 1 again. Median here is 2. Median here is 2. Median here is 2. So there's only two possible median values. Right, so I can write them underneath. Use the same table. Median in that case was a uh, 1. 2, 2. That one was a 1, 2, 2. There is no way to get a median 5. So now we do the probability of each of these. m is 1, m is 2, and the probability of m equals a little m. When it's 1, we've got the sum of those two, which is 20 out of 125. Bringing those two together. And 2 is everything else, 105 of 125. So I've done that by doing 1 minus 20 over 25. Uh, quick check, 31, uh, 79, uh, 105. Yep, so that works out. Uh, they simplify them, but that should be perfectly valid and uh, equivalent.